Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I have another fountain pen review for you. Today will be the first of five fully won fountain pens that I will review and give away to a lucky subscriber. The first fully won we will look at is this fully won world map. I did an unboxing video a few days ago examining the contents of a pen care package that was sent to me by Joel Terrell. In it were five fully won pens, one of which is this pen right here. I will show you the unboxing and then do a review and a writing sample and then tell you how you can win this very pen. So let's look at the unboxing of this pen and get to giving it away right now. And this one is Full of M World Mape. 1260 from Bobby. Look at that. That's very interesting. Get some better light on that. It's a world map. Ooh, a nice size. Number six, full of one nib on that. Interesting section. Interesting, it's a snap cap, but it's got threads on it. Well, each one of these is going to require some study. And this one has a blind cap on it to run the converter from the outside. That's a nice little feature. So here we are with the Fully Wen World Map, the first of five Fully Wen pens I will review and give away thanks to the generosity of Joel Terrell. I've had this pen inked up and I've been writing with it for the last few days. What I want to do is look at the parts and features of this pen and then do some size comparisons and measurements and do a writing sample. Please stay tuned after the writing sample where I'll talk about what I like and what I don't like about this pen and also I'll show you how you can enter to win it. To start off, being a metal pen, it isn't surprising it is a hefty one weighing in at uh, 43 grams from the top we see a domed chrome finial atop a flared top of the cap, separated by a wide chrome band that holds a sword-shaped clip in place. The clip is nicely springy and has two faux crystals embedded in the tip. From the flare at the top, the black enameled cap tapers up to a large double beveled chrome band. The lower bevel meets the body of the barrel flush the chrome and black barrel tapers slightly until we reach Australia. Australia, 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 we love you, honey. <laughs> Where it tapers down to a blind faux cap with a mirroring domed chrome finial at the bottom. The blind cap actually unscrews to allow access to the converter inside. The blind cap is made of plastic. The barrel has a cross grid of chrome lines representing latitude and longitude as well as a stylized representation of a Mercator map of the world. Or perhaps it's just a squished Mercator map of the world, it's hard to tell. However the map was designed, the squeezing squeezed Greenland right off the face of the world. Do you want me to send you back to where you were? Unemployed in Greenland? Some continents are labeled, like North and South America, and Africa and Australia, but also some countries like Russia, China, and Japan. I wouldn't use this pen to chart a course across the Pacific, though. Oh. You certainly are a girl of many colors. First your legs get blue, then your face turns green, and now you're red all over. 
never knew what suffering was until I came on this pleasure trip. The cap snaps off to reveal a plastic section with chrome rings and an almost number six size fully wound steel nib. The nib has some scroll work as well as the fully wound logo, the word fully wound, and an M for medium. And there's a look at the plastic feed. The section is a tapered barrel shape with a chrome ring and a small lip towards the nib. It is a good size and is fairly comfortable. The barrel end of the section has some very curious chrome threads which serve no purpose other than to confuse this reviewer. What's the matter, Pop? I'm confused. When I examined these threads under my loop, I discovered they aren't threads at all, but some kind of ringed pattern design. As design elements only, for it serves no function, I can only say it's really lacking. There is already sufficient chrome on this black and chrome pen, and the loss of this little bit of design fluff would really be an improvement. The section unscrews to reveal the included standard international piston converter. This one is actually branded Jin Hao. It could be that Joel included this converter, and it's unclear if this converter belongs to this pen. The pen will take standard international short or long cartridges and two piggybacked standard international shorts. The cap posts securely, but not very deeply. And the heavy cap back weights the pen significantly, as the cap weighs one gram more than the rest of the pen. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable in the hand. This pen retails for $12.60 US on Bobby's eBay store, Office Supplies Pen. Now let's look at some size comparisons. So here is the Fully Wen World Map with a... Jin Hao 159, a Bauer 051, a Moonman T1, and a Faber Castell Loom. Now let's look at them posted. So here we have the Fully Wen world map. It's almost a full number six nib. You can see the number six nib in the Jin Hao 159. And this is the number five size nib in the Bauer 051. There's a number six size nib in the Moonman T1. And the Faber Castell has a number five size nib. So let's look at some measurements and then I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing sample for the Fully Wen. World Map. And this is a medium steel nib. And the ink today is KWZ as your number five. The paper here is Clairefontaine 90 GSM. Let's check the wetness. You can see the pen is pretty wet, not too bad. As I said, I've been writing with this pen for a few days now, and when I first inked it up, the pen skipped quite frequently. Since the tines were aligned, the pen was very wet and the nib was smooth, I realized I had skipped out on the cleaning of this pen before I did the review. So I cleaned out the pen and then cleaned it again with soapy water and rinsed it and dried it thoroughly. I don't generally skip this step, but in skipping it, I caused it to skip. But it skips no more. 
as to line variation. That's a light touch. That first skip was just for me talking while the pen was drying out. And here is a bit of pressure. So it's very stiff. And it starts off as a fairly thick line anyway. Very little line variation. And let's listen to it right. Very smooth, very pleasant. And for some reverse writing. It actually does it fairly nicely. And for some quick writing. keeps up very nicely. So there you have it, the Fully Wen World Map. What do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, for starters, it writes very smoothly and very well. The nib is a large size, which I like, and the section is comfortable. Unposted, the pen isn't too heavy, and it isn't that unpleasant to write with for any length of time. Also, the little blind cap comes off to access the end of a converter. Now, I don't need that for filling. In fact, it's a little awkward for filling because you only touch the little bit of it. But if you ever want to prime the feed, it's really nice to have quick access to that to uh, shoot a little bit of ink up into your feed to get it writing. So now there are a few things that I don't like so much about this pen. I don't like the way the cap spins easily while it's capped, it doesn't seem to hold it um, with any security at all. It's fairly loose. The blind cap also spins. It never tightens. And I realized that that was because this bit right here, the metal sleeve with the threads on it, spins around inside the barrel. Now, that just might be a a uh, loose fit over time, but, uh, you know, if I were going to keep this pen, I'd probably drop a little bit of, of crazy glue into there to keep it from spinning, because you never know when that cap is tight. It is in no danger of falling apart. It's all just a bit too loose for me. Is your tie too tight, too loose? Today is Toulouse Lautrec's birthday, and I bought him a belt, and I said, is that belt too tight, too loose? <laughs> You're missing a hell of a show! Also, I don't like the added rings at the base of this section. It just confuses me. Every time I go to cap the pen, I feel like I should be screwing it on. Like that. And then I remember to give it a push to click. Now, after all that, are you interested in winning this unique fountain pen? If you wish to enter the random draw for this pen, all you have to do is be a subscriber to my channel, add a comment below stating the titles of the movies or television shows for each of the four cutaways in this video, and do it before midnight Pacific Standard Time next Wednesday, April 22nd. Your comment will be entered into a random draw by me at that time. If the comment randomly selected is correct, the winner will be announced on the community tab of my YouTube channel. If the comment is incorrect, I'll just keep spinning the wheel until I get a correct comment from a subscriber. The lucky winner will have exactly one week to contact me by email with their address and I'll ship them their prize. If no one collects, I'll spin again until someone owns this world. Tonight, Broadway. Tomorrow. <laughs> if you like this video, then please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get an instant notification of new videos. And that just leaves it for me to say...
Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote.